Are you feeling that? <laughs> I know what you're saying, bro. Crowded, crazy, chaotic. Welcome to Bondi Beach. On a hot summer's day, tens of thousands come to play in the world's biggest sand pit. But things can go very wrong. 10, 11, 12. These are the men who have ultimate responsibility for beach safety. The elite professional lifeguard patrol Bondi every day of the year. Men like Kerr Box, former world-class pro surfer. It's like you're a rock and roll star. Like, it's the most incredible experience I've ever had. Tonight, New Year's Day begins with a bang. It's a day when there's more drama on the sand than in the water. <laughs> when the mercury hits a record high. A day of lost children and stolen wallets. My passport, my wallet, my money. No other beach in the world does New Year's Eve quite like Bondi. DJ superstar Fatboy Slim has come to rock 20,000 people. Happy New Year! Even our lifeguards are in party mode. There's Dino, Harry's, and Yatesy kicking up his heels. It's a brand new year for this band of brothers. It's it's 6 a.m. The morning after the night before. The lifeguards are bracing themselves for what could be the biggest day of the year. Well, you know, Tracy, what can we say? The camera loves us. <laughs> yeah, this is the morning after the night before. What did you do last night? Big one? Oh, it was pretty Clearly. average. Pretty average, pretty yeah. Average. We yeah. used Fatboy Slim. Yeah, Fatboy Slim, yeah. It was all right. Birds on fire. Light my fire. <laughs> Booze, drugs and surf. It's a potentially lethal mix. New Year's Day has trouble written all over it. Yeah! yeah! By the time the day's out, our boys will have dealt with over 50 incidents. 10 ambulances will be called. And the temperature will rocket to 45 degrees, the hottest New Year's Day on record. What better way to begin the new year than taking a swim in what locals call Dr. Pacific? But it's bad medicine for some. Uh, it's important, mate. It's a pretty busy year. We've got a friend of us just dislocated his shoulder. And uh, we were wondering maybe you can help him. Hey boys, mate, we've got to dislocate his shoulder. When you guys want to both do a turn to Central. Mate, it's coming up right now. Just go to shuttle, boys. We're on. The boys have only got one flag in the sand, and already they're called to the first casualty of the new year. Well, we'll turn to get some ice on it, and it shrinks the muscles. Yeah. All right, and you might be able to get it back in. Oh, you're able to do that? I can't. You might be able to. French tourist Jean wiped out on his first wave of the year. His shoulder's been dislocated before, but never this bad. The thing that that's the. the the first time that I'm not you, that I'm not able to to really cut in. into yeah. Okay, this stuff. Yeah. In about two minutes, you're gonna feel no pain. But the more you inhale it, the more the pain will go. Okay. okay. It's only 6:30 a.m. and the lifeguards are already stretched. Just keep an eye on the water. There's that many people down here that. Got to have some, one or two of us watching the whole time, everyone's pissed. And... 
duty lifeguard Bobby calls in extra help. Not an easy job on New Year's morning. You're on. You're on. I've rung everyone. Can't get anyone. Uh, 11 to 7, you good with that? Happy New Year to you guys. See ya. You lay back here, buddy. You're all right. Yeah. Jean is in serious pain while he waits for an ambulance. He's been sucking hard on the analgesic gas. That's a good drug. You need to give me the... <laughs> He's better already. He wants to give me a kiss. I just said that. I just said you raised your Okay. Not yet, not anymore. <laughs> It seems like everyone at Bondi is in an altered state of mind. Whippet suddenly had to redirect the ambulance called for Jean. Uh, it looks like a drug overdose on the beach. Male, mid-20s. We're gonna put... Yeah. He's in a pretty bad way. You need yep. to breathe in through your nose. Back over here, mate. Back over here. It's okay, mate. Just keep your hand there. It's okay, mate, all right? This young man started fitting and collapsed on the sand. He's bleeding from the nose and mouth. He needs urgent treatment, but is fighting the lifeguards. <laughs> Don't fight it, buddy. It's all okay. It's all okay. It's all good. It's okay, mate, right? Lifeguards are treating a young man suffering a seizure. We are going to put off the on. Your nose is bleeding. That's what the blood on your finger was. Nice and deep breath, right? That's it. Breathe in through your nose, mate. Out through your mouth. Okay, mate. That's good. Nice and slow. An off-duty nurse is assisting. And out through your mouth. My name's Kelly. Okay. Listen to Kelly, all right? Well done. I was sitting over on the beach with my friends when I noticed the gentleman being attended to by the lifeguards. I then saw him sort of get up and start punching himself and whatnot. Um, even though I'm a drug health nurse, my background is mental health, and that tells me pretty much straight away something's going wrong. Okay. You've taken drugs. Your body hasn't liked it. Mask on face. Oh, come oh, on. Come oh, on. Don't fight her, right? Come on. Listen to me. Just, just, just hold him, right? Yeah. Just hold him. Yeah. His friend reveals he took an ecstasy tablet hours earlier. Well, mate. That's good man, good man, mate. Champion. You're a champion. Lifeguards are also told he's from a strict Muslim family and is afraid of being identified. A bit scared to tell us what's going on. I think they're uh, going to be in trouble with the police or maybe, you know, it looks bad for their family or, you know. To get in trouble off the uh, parents, but um, uh, obviously doesn't want to go to the hospital. But uh, that's where he's going. When ambulance officers arrive, their priority is to sedate him. You really, I just need your finger here, darling. If only they can get a needle in his arm. Do you want to explain to him? No, don't tell him. No, don't tell him. Don't tell him. Sorry, sorry. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Relax your arm, mate. You've got a knee. Mate, you have to keep your arm really still, okay? Relax your hand. Don't make a fist. Keep still, mate. Come on, buddy. Take it easy. You love these jobs in the sand, eh? More Rambos arrive, and by now, almost every lifeguard on the beach is helping out. Keep still, mate. What time is that? The spinal board helps restrain the man. Open your eyes. His arm's going, his arm's going. I can't hold it. I got that one, box. He needs to be protected from himself until the drugs leave his system. He's going to lose it again. That's it, see? He's going to lose it. It's all right. As the New Year's aftermath is cleared away, Jean's on his way to hospital. There you go, it's not that easy, right? Oh, oh. Are you, are you hold, stick it out in your mouth. <laughs> I'll grab your hand, hold this. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, mate, you're good. Yeah, you're good. 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 Rod Kerr, Kerr Box. He's second in charge at Bondi. If it was a big rescue, you kind of want Box there. He's such an awesome, awesome water guy. He toured the globe as a pro surfer. He was number six in the world at surfing. It's like you're a rock and roll star. Like, it's the most incredible experience I've ever had. 
Every lunch break he's out there. Every morning before work, lunch break, you can bet your life he's out there. His water skills are good. His nightlife skills are even better. If Kerr Box is looking forward to a beer after work, it's a long way off yet. You digging for leprechauns? Yeah. Leprechauns, man. I'm digging for China. I'm digging for leprechauns. <laughs> what are you doing? Part of He's got the angry inch out. Find the Irish! It's still only 7 a.m. and there's more trouble on the way. How are you doing, mate? How are you, mate? Um, there's just this chick down there on the beach. Um, she's conscious, but she's kind of like, I try to open up her eyes and they're like rolling back. So in the she's head, just mate. lying on the beach one hour, is she? Yeah, and I'm just a bit worried about her. Like. Broadway Central to Rhino. Hey, Bob. Here we go again, boys. Oh, that's famous, huh? Okay. The young woman's unconscious, alone. Open up. Got a pulse. Got a the bag. Do you, do you know much? No, he's just walking. Just Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. I just saw her. I was, she was just not responding, so I just got a bit worried. I was opening, opening up her eyes, and she's eyes were rolling back like that, so I went, oh, I don't want her to die or anything like that. Yeah, pulse is good, pulse is strong. Okay, she's breathing, she's okay. Right. Hello. The boys don't know if she's suffering a drug overdose, had her drink spiked, or has possibly been assaulted. She's coming around now. Okay, you stay there, there you stay right. there. You're all right. Okay, she's gonna start throwing her. Pardon, what's your name? Laura. Okay, she's coming around now. Her name's Laura. Okay, you stay there, you stay right. there. You're all right. Okay, she's gonna start throwing her. You okay? Hey? You alright? Sure? Okay, we're just gonna put some oxygen on you. Yeah, okay. You were passed out cold, darling, so we just need to do this to you, alright? You alright? On the life gas, the burning life gas. Go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna need that in the ambulance, okay. mate. She's got a fairly strong pulse, but she's quite incoherent. Okay. Lifeguards are about to discover Laura has no ID can't remember where she lives or where she's from. Bondi, midday. Thousands are flocking to the beach. Lifeguards have another 40,000 people to look after on what's rapidly becoming Sydney's hottest New Year's Day on record. A lot of people down here enjoying their first day of the new year, but sand is scorchingly hot, and the and the wind is probably the hottest, driest wind I've ever felt in Sydney. It's horrible. Burned my feet running from the tower to the water. I've never experienced that before. Air temperatures 45 degrees. Sand temperatures over 55 degrees. Everyone's a cat on a hot tin roof. Oh, it's gone crazy. The heat, the, the 40 degree temperatures is killing people. By 1 p.m., there's been 16 cases of heat stroke. Ambulances are queuing up at the beach. They're uh, dropping like flies. Ambulance, please. Uh, it's a lady with some quite bad heat exhaustion. This is the fourth one of these I've run today. Obviously, we, we don't experience it like this. You usually get a cool breeze, but the, the breeze was hot. <laughs> I've got um, another ambulance on the way, and I'll be um, with you shortly. We've had about three or four patients drop in the last sort of five minutes here. So, um, so we're going to leave you here with the lifeguards while I organise another car, and we'll, we'll get you moving up to hospital. Laura's been brought up from the beach. She's in much better shape, but still suffering the effects of a big night out. The English tourist still can't remember where she's staying. You don't have any numbers, phone numbers at all? The only number I know is um, hey. What, anyone? What? <laughs> is there anyone? Do you know where you're staying? Or, or you don't have a number for anyone? Have you got any idea on you? 
Bobby Aldwin's turned from lifeguard to detective. He's trying to help Laura remember where she's staying in Sydney. Oh, here we go. Beaconsfield. Rosebury. Erskineville. Newtown. Stanmore. Stanmore. Annandale. Marrickville. Coogee. Bronte. Maroubra. Darlinghurst. Laura's still highly vulnerable. The lifeguards want her to stay in the tower. 41 degrees here today. You've had a lot of alcohol. You don't have much water or liquid in your system. All right, so it's quite likely to pass out again. All right, so you're better off in here in the cool. Drink lots of water. Yeah. But Laura's intent on leaving. Laura's disappeared into the crowd of 50,000 people. But now, a little girl has lost two. How old are you, Samantha? Seven. Seven. OK, and you don't remember where your mum was sitting? We have a little seven-year-old girl here called Samantha. She's wearing a blue bikini with happy, smiley faces on it and a pink singlet and a couple of Barry Beef missing. And her, she can't find her mother. So can you keep an eye out for any lady who comes looking for a Samantha? Samantha came up to me and said that if I could help you to find your mum, so because she couldn't remember where she left her. And the only thing she remembered was the umbrella, white and blue. First, I asked my mum if I could go to the rock pool, and she said yes. So I went to the rock pool, and after that, I went to the shells, and I looked for some shells, and I put them in a safe place. And after that, I, um, I asked the lady, well, I'll swim me, could you may look after my money? Then I'd lose my money, then uh, um, I got... And then I kept swimming, and then after that, I got in the pool, and I started looking for my mum, but I couldn't find her. A champion story, Tom. I reckon that your mum is up that end, because that's the only rock pool. So I reckon you're sitting up that end somewhere, so I'm going to get the binoculars and see if I can see any blue and white umbrellas up there. You've been doing so a single I... one. Well, we're good, at, we're good at spotting these sort of things. Scores of children get lost on Bondi each year. Now, it's Corey's job to find Samantha's mum. Take me back to the sweet times, the hot nights. Everything is going to be all right in the summertime. Baby, in the summertime, that is where I'll be. We've got to find your mum before seven, Samantha, so we can go home, eh? I'm gonna leave you here by yourself. When you went to the pool in, for a swim in the rock pool, how long did it take you to walk there? Uh, it took me about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? You must have been walking from this end. I think that could be my mum over there with the blue and white umbrella. There's a blue and white umbrella up there in... Two of them. It looks like the middle of the northern set of flags. Finding a blue and white umbrella on Bondi Beach is no easy task. Shall we try and walk over there? Yeah, go and walk over there and see. Okay, shall we go and walk over there? There you go. Off-duty nurse Marina's taking Samantha for another search. Meanwhile, the first swim at Bondi for French tourist Guillaume has turned into a disaster. I've got a bag, a black bag like this one, and I went to the water to, to have a bath and it's gone. Somebody rubbed it. And I've got everything in it. My passport, my wallet, my money. I arrived yesterday. No way. <laughs> mate, it's, um, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, mate. Guillaume's looking for his bag, and Samantha's still looking for her mum. Has anybody lost their little daughter? Samantha, she's seven years old, gorgeous, up at the lifeguard tower. Lifeguards have had more reports of bag thefts. There's a group of thieves at work, and Chapo thinks he's got them in his sights. Mate, Inspector Chapo's on the case, don't worry about that. He's called the police. We've got four young guys just hanging on the back of the beach, which look very, like, very suspect. Now, one of them is walking up the back, sort of keeping an eye on the other three walking on the sand. We'll keep an eye on them, and if they go, we'll just jump on them. The boys are heading for a bag. Are they? 
Boys, I've just seen them pick up the bag, mate. They're running up the beach. Quick, quick, just go get them. The boys race off the beach, but lifeguards and police chase them down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's in it, mate? I don't know. Quite a couple of kids knocking bags off, so. Might have been the, the French guy's bag that got taken as well, so. Glad we got them. The Frenchman's wallet and passport aren't amongst the thieves' booty, but someone else's is. I was just going for a swim. I came out and I was looking for it. But it can't be that bad of luck. And uh, saw one of the lifeguards on the beach and said, it's OK, mate, they're all up the back, got the kids, all done and dusted. So it's very good. <laughs> I was going to be walking a long way in my sluggos. <laughs> Guillaume's still had no luck. This is my report number to the police. I went to the police because I searched for the, the old oh, thing, right didn't find anything. Yeah, mate. Sweet. You got travel insurance? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good luck. Good Bye. Luck, See you. But Guillaume's not alone. Yeah, this, this poor bloke in the shorts over there, he's had absolutely everything taken. Everything. He made a phone call from the tower just before and he's um, got someone coming down to pick him up, but he's got nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> just the shorts he's got on. <laughs> poor bloke. Okay. Hours earlier, English tourist Laura left the lifeguard tower dazed and confused. Lifeguards called police, who decided the safest place for Laura is back at the station. With the help of detectives and an old train ticket, Laura remembered where she was staying. Cogra. It's almost sunset. 40 degrees and 20,000 people are still swarming on Bondi Beach. Finally, Samantha's found her mother's blue and white umbrella. Oh, the end of another crazy day on Bondi Beach. Happy New Year. Next week on Bondi Rescue, the boys come face to face in the annual lifeguard challenge. Super fit, the veteran. I tell you, you'll give a lot of these kids a bit of hurry up. Don't worry about that. And a young man pulled from the surf. No pulse, no breath, no life. Stand clear. Stay clear, clear. Ready?